So in the last lecture, I introduced this representation of how we can argue about what qubits or what quantum algorithms are doing while working with normal bits, with numbers we can represent in our computers. And so you should remember from that, that if you have n qubits, you need to represent them as a vector of length 2 to the n, where each entry contains a number, and this number we'll call the amplitude. Now, when you measure, then you destroy everything, and it gives you a probability distribution. Well, you measure one number, and the probability with which you measure that number depends on the square of the amplitude. So in this case, the largest amplitude that I see here is 9, that is in the position 5. And so you're going to measure 5 with almost 50% probability. So this is the same example I had on the, lights, on the slides last time, except for now we're actually going to do some computations on these qubits. So these are three qubits representing the numbers. Well, three bits you can represent the numbers between 0 and 7. And so the zeros qubit hold the amplitude 3, first qubit, well, qubit, let me stop, qubit which represents 1, that holds the amplitude 1, etc. And now if we are computing in not operations, so that means a negation, or if you're computing on bits, so integers mod 2, it just means adding 1 mod 2. And so the 0, 0, 1, so the 0 turns into 0, 0, so 0, 0, 0 turns into 0, 0, 1, and so that means that the contents of the position 0, position 1, flip. So the 3, 1 turns into 1, 3. And similarly, the 2 and 3, 4 and 5, and 6 and 7 swap. And the nice thing about the swap is, well, if you do it twice, it swaps back. If you do a not 0 on 4 qubits, so 0 means it's taken the least significant bit of the qubits. Again, it's just a swapping of adjacent pairs. So it means it turns the even number into the odd number that is one larger, and it turns an odd number into the even number, which is one smaller. And then we can, of course, also negate other of the qubits. So going back to three qubits here, if we negate qubit 1, so that turns 0, 0, 0 into 0, 1, 0, that's an integer 2. So then it doesn't swap adjacent pairs, but it swaps the pairs where the well gap of one, so where the qubit with the one qubit has the opposite uh, contents. So it swaps the three with the four, and the one with the one, the five with the two, and the nine with the six. And then finally, you can also do it on two, so on the top, most significant qubit here. Now that one is doing gaps by four just taking the bottom half and swapping with the top half. So the bottom half all has the qubit 2 equals 0, and the top half has that one equal to 1. If you would be applying this to the pure states, so the ones which are guaranteed to give you a measurement, so the 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, will give you 0 as a measurement. Well, the position 1, uh, the 0 position is the only thing that contains something. So the amplitude there is 1, everywhere else 0. So we're guaranteed to measure zero. Whereas the flipped one means, well, those two adjacent pairs swap. Most of them just swap zeros, but the zero one and the one zero flip. That means that we're now guaranteed to measure one. So the not zero means that the measurement after we're doing this um, has this qubit zero flipped. So it flips zero to one. 2 to 3, 4 to 5, 6 to 7, as we just discussed. So that means, well, it's an operation on these classical 3-bit numbers, but it's doing all of those at the same time. We're showing the effect of not on our representation. So if you think of this uh, rightmost column there as something, yeah, that's what you would have understood. Why is she getting through all this complicated stuff? I understand, but we need to have a representation that we can do the computations with on our current computers so that we can simulate quantum algorithms, we can see whether they work, whether we get the stopping conditions right. And it's quite different from our normal algorithms where, well, we don't have this probability distribution. We can just ask you to output something here. We can only 
well output well we get to output something which is the most probable so it's useful to know how this works and well we're going to see some more interesting gates than just not gates now so the next gate we can look at is a controlled not gate so that's the c not and i will always use the subscript on the c for the control bit and the subscript on the not for the bit where it's happening so we are negating the zeros bit depending on whether the one bit is set so in this case for the well for the first two numbers so for zero and for one the one bit is not set so nothing is happening there then for the number two yep two is zero one zero and so that one has the one bit set and we're negating the zero bit so that turns the two into three and three into two nothing against again for four and five and then six and seven swap again i should also highlight that this as well as the not gate before is only flipping around the numbers it doesn't actually change the amplitudes the amplitudes are the same they're just in different places so the nine in this case stayed in the same place so we're still most likely to measure five but the other numbers so the ones are moving to the front for instance here what it does after the measurement is this operation so it takes q0 and then there's this plus in the circle i'll be using that for well, the binary addition so that means 0 plus 0 is 0 0 plus 1 or 1 plus 0 is 1 and 1 plus 1 congruent to 2 congruent to 0 mod 2 and so knotting into 0 means well it's an operation on the q0 part and it's taking the q1 xor or added mod 2 into there and we can do this also in other positions we can control on the second qubit or qubit 2 so that means it only affects the upper half so only the 5926 part and then it flips there the adjacent pairs so that takes then q0 plus q2 and then finally we can also well have a different bit be affected for instance here we are affecting the top bit and we're controlling on the bottom bit so the bottom bit is set for every odd number and then for the odd numbers we're flipping the bottom half and the top half so c naught when you do it twice well it's a flip and it flips back so it's its own inverse and one word which are going to see with lots of quantum algorithm is uh, reversibility so that means you can compute the inverse and in many cases you actually have to compute the inverse it's not just the well it's nice to know that you can but you also often have to return certain things that you got as zeros you have to return as zeros all the gates that quantum computers are using are reversible gates so everything you're building from these gates is a reversible computation but actually doing the computation reversibly takes extra steps so what we have here is an addition model 2 and addition per se is not reversible if you take a comma b maps to a plus b you have no way of figuring out what a plus b was even if it's just bits if you're seeing zero you don't know whether it was zero plus zero or one plus one that was the input if you're mapping a comma b to a comma a plus b then that is reversible and it's even its own inverse you can just do the same thing again and that's what this c not gate is that is doing um well on a and b in this case q1 and q0 it will be taking q1 unchanged and turns the bottom qubit into the sum of the two one level up we we'll get into well we now have addition module 2 we also want to have modification module 2 it's the same situation if you take a times a and b into a times b it's not reversible if you're keeping those values around then okay you can think of division as an operation what we normally do is we take a comma b comma c into a b c plus a times b and so what we're seeing here is we're controlling on c2 and c1 so that one qubit and two qubit the negation or the knotting of the least significant the zeros qubit so if both c1 and c2 are set okay that only happens for six and seven so let's focus on those then we're flipping the bottom bit and so yes 
that's where 6 and 2 flip. We can control other values or first write this out. So this is the product Q1 times Q2 and then add to Q0 all of this mod 2. So now we have the equivalent of an addition, we have the equivalent of multiplication and we have negations. And from that we can build all our normal algorithms. Quantum algorithms, well, we're going to be using some more things, but this is already a good set. But keep in mind that all that's happening so far is that we are moving the amplitudes around. We haven't actually changed the values here. We can control by C0 times C1, the second, well, the two qubit. And so if now the number is 3 mod 4, then we flip the top bit so that changes 3 and 7 to each other. Or we can take um, other qubits and control them. In general, well, it's again its own inverse. If we do this twice, we're getting Q2 plus Q0 times Q1 plus Q0 times Q1. And so that's just Q2. So it's another reversible gate. We can build big sequences of those. So how about this? We're first doing a control controlled knot where we modify the second or well, the two qubit control on the bottom one. So this is changing the uh, only the three and the seven are flipping. Then we're changing control on the bottom bit. So the odd numbers, we're changing the one bit up. So that's flipping one and three and it's flipping uh, five and seven. And then finally we negate. That was just the flip there and we neg negate on the zeros bit. So that's adjacent pairs. What has happened? So in the top row we have 31415926. In the bottom row we have 6314592. Ah, okay, so this is a rotation by one position of these eight numbers. And if you want to rotate by two positions, you can just do two of those, or you can work a bit harder and see where they can say some of the, those operations. And because each of those gates is reversible, if you do the same sequence well, in mirror-wise order, you'll just be getting back to the original state. Now we start getting some more interesting gates. So the Hubble bar gate um, is actually changing the amplitudes we're seeing. So before it was just permutations of the same numbers, and now we're getting some differences of these amplitudes. So here we're taking, um, so this direction is the addition, this direction is the negation. So when you're seeing um, two lines, so if the lines are like this, then it's an addition, so we have those two, or we have those two. And so the three and the four gets, uh, three and the one gets added to four, and then three minus one is two. So it's computing a b maps to a plus b and a minus b. And we can also do this on further away qubits. So this one is the zero Hadamard. So it's taking these pairs matching on everything but the zeros qubit. We can also have them match on everything but the one qubit. And so then we have these gaps of one. So a, b, c, d turns into a and c doing something together and b and d doing something together. Or we can do it even for bigger gaps. Um, if we do two of those in a row, for the other gates it was not changing things. So those were the own inverses. Now what we have here, well, if we take a plus b plus a minus b, we're getting 2a. If we're taking a plus b minus a minus b, we're getting plus 2, uh, yeah, two, plus 2b. And so we're just doubling the amplitudes. Now, that is what we see in our representation. But as I highlighted in the first lecture, we're normally scaling this. So normally you wouldn't even see this because we're always scaling by the sum of the squares of the amplitudes. So Hadamard is also self-inverse. Now if you combine Hadamard and not just two of each other, but put a knot in the middle, so then the knot is just flipping adjacent pairs, then we're seeing some other phenomena. So compared to the left side of the slide, the amplitudes, the values are the same, but everything which has the zero bit set has negated the amplitude. So we're multiplying again by the end by two and negate if Q0 is set. Again, this doesn't affect the measurement because the measurement depends on the square of the amplitude and the minus one disappears there. 
but you can see how we start having some more control over what the values are. Okay, so here is some big and scary thing which has lots of operations following each other. So one is Toffoli gate, which is like a modification, then the Hadamard gates, not gate, Hadamard and Seymour. This is also our first example where we see something which is called ancilla qubits. So these are extra qubits that we don't actually need for the result, but we need them as an intermediate step, kind of for doing the computations we wanted to do. Let's first figure out what is the computation we wanted to do. Okay, so 3 turns into 6, 1 turns into 2, so that's again doubling, except for the last one, that one has a negation sign. So we're doubling the amplitudes and we're negating number 3. Well, number 3 is the one which has C0 and C1 both set, and we're seeing a lot of controls on C0 and C1. So yes, this one is the negate the amplitude if Q0, Q1 is set. And this one needs the Q0 to be 0. So we have now three qubits of which we only care about the bottom two bits. The top qubit we added in order to do this computation. We're getting it in as a clean qubit, so as a 0, and we have to return it as a 0. So this computation is not just achieving that the first part has the minus 2 there, but also that the, um, the high bits have all zeros again. Again, it's just a negation, so it doesn't affect the measurements, but let's take this one step further. So here's another interesting circuit. Where we started with Hadamars, then there's some mystery operation in the middle, and what you see is, well, it's only changing the sign of the, well, representation of zero. So that means, well, you're changing this, the, the negating the amplitude if the zero, if the one qubit and the two bit qubit are not set. Okay, you can build this by taking a hint from the uh, left part of the slide. And then we do another sequence of H0 and H1 of the Hadamard gates. And okay, what do we get here? So let's forget about the right part of all zeros. We want to do something on the other four values. And let me also scale those by forgetting about the minus signs and let me divide by three, uh, by four. So then we're getting, well, even numbers, but then also another times. What this is actually doing is negate the amplitude around its average. So the average of 3, 1, 4, and 1, so the sum of those is 9, and so divided by 4 is 2.25. And now the 3 is 0, uh, 0 0.75 above the 2.25. So we're now negating around the average, so we're taking 2.25 minus this difference. So we're getting 2.25 minus 0 0.75, and that is a 1.5. If we're starting at 1, which is 1.25 less than 2.25, then we're adding this difference because we're negating the difference. So we're getting 1, sorry, we're getting 2.25 plus 1.25, getting 3.5. And then the last one, 4, is larger than 2.25 by 1.75. And so that is the 2.25 minus the 1.75, getting. 0 0.5 and 3.5 is the same as we've seen before. So now this is actually affecting the measurements. So now the values, the well, values after qubit after measurement would be 1 and 3, which would be least likely to be measured before, are now the most likely to be measured. So that is really changing things and it's changing the distribution of things. So averaging, uh, sorry, negating around the average will be an interesting step in some further algorithm that we're going to see in the one after next video.